Welcome to um, this presentation presented by uh, Jacques Savone, psychoanalyst in Paris, and myself, John Gasparoni. We are here today trying to address some of the problems uh, in the transmission of psychoanalysis in the time of capitalism. We'll be speaking about several different topics um, and trying to make our position clear so that uh, those of you coming to see gas and wondering about or coming to study Lacan or study psychoanalysis will have a better idea, a better understanding of um, what our intention behind this project is. I think um, one of the things I think that Lacan cited, I'd like to actually start out by reading, if you don't mind, is where at the end of Field and Function, he quoted the parable of Pratchapati. Um, it's wonderful about communication, and I'm quoting Lacan, who quoted the scripture itself. For when the Devas, the men, and the Asuras were ending their novitiate with Pratchapati, so we read in the second Brahmanan of the fifth lesson of the Brat. Karani Upanishad, they address to him this prayer, speak to us. Da, said Prajupati, God of thunder, did you hear me? And the Devas answered and said, thou hast said to us, Damiana, master yourselves. The sacred text meaning that the powers above submit to the law of speech. Da, said Prajupati, God of thunder, did you hear me? And the men answered and said, Thou hast said to us, Data, give. The sacred text meaning that men recognize each other by the gift of speech. Da, said Prajapati, God of thunder, did you hear me? And the Asuras answered and said, Thou hast said to us, Diadayam, be merciful. The sacred text meaning that the powers below resound to the invocation of speech. That, continues the text, is what the divine voice caused to be heard in the thunder. Submission, gift, grace. Da, da, da. For Prajapati replies to all, you have heard me. And I think that sort of encapsulates it. What you say is always heard with a different sense or meaning than what you intended. Yes, what, what is not uh, obvious to begin with is uh, uh, this, uh, there is a, a naive belief that when two people are talking together, it's, um, uh, it's a matter of two, uh, two subjects discussing, uh, or they're in a way that there are only two people involved. Mm -hmm. people, yeah, maybe it's two people, but there is, uh, I would say, more two entities involved. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> actually, this seems to be a very naive uh, conception of uh, human interaction, and uh, this has been formulated here, and uh, it has been formulated by many, um, many, um, philosophers and uh, uh, that there might be uh, more than uh, two entities involved mm -hmm. and uh, one, one credit we have uh, to uh, Lacan and uh, after Freud is that he, uh, he, 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 he noticed or, or he put forward that uh, actually there was um, four entities uh, involved. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course, the two persons who are uh, the, the person who is uttering and the person who is listening, but two more persons, two uh, excuse me, two more entities are being involved. Um, uh, these uh, two uh, entities uh, can be described as the um, uh, uh, 
I would say the the realm of the of the of the speech mm-hmm. of each one, the uttering one has uh, some realm of of, of 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 speech, and the one who is listening has his own realm of speech as well. Mm-hmm. So these involve four pers- four entities. Uh, has uh, as uh, as uh, Lacan had to uh, had to name these uh, uh, two more entities because if if you don't put a name on on, on things or or concepts is uh, it's uh, it's always uh, uh, can be extremely fluctuating. So he named these uh, these entities the other O T O T H E R with a big O, capital O, in French autre, A U T R E, with capital A. When named uh, other. It is some kind of metonymy. Uh, the, 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 the more complete sentence would be to name that the other of the language or the other of the speech. Mm-hmm. And you can shorter the, 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 the signifier by naming that other, the other, mm-hmm. big O. Because later we will be talking about another other mm-hmm. which uh, will have uh, which won't be uh, uh, with a capital O okay uh, this um, when you know in in, in this um, in, in this country uh, people are very fascinated by uh, Lie, lie, by lying, mm-hmm. and liars, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's uh, it's nearly a, a capital crime to to lie, mm-hmm. and um, in a way, that's a funny thing. Is that when uh, it's that a way to recognize the existence of a other. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the speech because if I say something and if I am lying it's, uh, it's a way to say that there is one part of, uh, of, of, of me or one part of my uh, being who is uh, 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 meaning something else that what I'm saying mm-hmm. and um, uh, the the one reason I think to uh, to 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 uh, uh, to raise 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 uh, uh, the the lie up to uh, to uh, to a crime is is a way a naive way to uh, to uh, to 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 refuse to uh, to accept the existence mm-hmm. of this other mm-hmm. uh, of this. Okay. It also seems that there's a confusion between an utterance that's credible and an utterance that's true. An utterance that's credible can be completely false, but because it meets or fits within the worldview of the, of the person hearing the utterance, they accept it as true. I think one of the best examples of what you're saying is the, what uh, a question which is uh, uh, occurring all the time for uh, uh, people who are studying, studying law is uh, what, what, is the, what is the truth mm-hmm. in, uh, in a cri- criminal affair. And uh, at the very end of a trial, it's, uh, what, is, uh, what, what is written down uh, is not the the truth of of the events mm-hmm. who have taken place, but the truth 
of the of the judge of mm -hmm. the judgment. Yeah. And this is very different. Mm -hmm. But it is that is the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, um, uh, this is connected to the fact that in, in this uh, regard, uh, the truth is as the structure of a fiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the truth of the, of the events um, might be extremely different of the truth of the judge. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this country where capital punishment is still in... Uh, in, uh, in 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 action uh, to know that uh, a lot of uh, of people convicted uh, uh, were actually innocent mm -hmm. when it has been proven uh, twenty years later or after the death. Yeah, after they've already been put to death. Yeah, put to death, and um, so is, this is a very good example of the. The, the large uh, uh, distance between the uh, the truth of the of the facts of the events and the truth of the judge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are trying to transmit something of the truth of the events of our experience of psychoanalysis through speaking. But by speaking, our speech is not only riddled with our own unconscious drives and desires, but also sets in resonance the unconscious drives and desires of the one who hears it. And there is a mishearing that happens at every turn. Even when you come to try and label something. And one of the issues um, that we have been going around the block with, with Creston Davis, who is unfortunately unable to be present with us today, is what to call what we're doing, what to call what will be produced by what we're trying to do, and what situation in the world might that put somebody who participates in this experiment and what they might hear? And, and I guess the question is how to, how to make those differences clear without getting uh, too involved in in, uh, th in the in the discourses. I don't know. Maybe we should. We may have to do that anyway. Uh, yes. What, what, one point is that um, when you take uh, a young man or one who is not so young and who has been uh, going through co through college or university uh, in a way uh, he has been uh, formatted mm -hmm. uh, into uh, a, a, a way of thinking and uh, and and a way of uh, of dealing with the knowledge, mm -hmm. um, all the schools uh, from the very beginning, when you are at kindergarten to the to the university, is uh, is is dedicated to to format uh, young people to believe that. Uh, the teacher has a knowledge that he is going to transmit to the student mm -hmm. and uh, he receives grades for, for, uh, for his, uh, his uh, conformation to, uh, to, to the, the knowledge brought by the teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, can have uh, devastating consequences. 
because uh, uh, the student uh, is led to ignore that there can be any other way to uh, to acquire uh, 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 knowledge mm -hmm. um, unless um, unless you uh, the, the student is in uh, in uh, in a process of Zen Buddhism or or a certain number of uh, of trainings uh, usually not uh, non occidental mm -hmm. um, uh, he thinks he believes that he has to go through this um, this um, uh, this this path uh, designed by the teacher, and uh, at the very end uh, there is uh, something called the diploma, mm -hmm. or the the graduates, or uh, or the, which uh, usually live uh, le leads to uh, the um, the the authorization to practice uh, certain jobs who need. Uh, uh, a specific license. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the case for most of the of the teachings we are going through. Even if you uh, if you learn how to drive a car or a plane, uh, it is uh, it is uh, you are not going to decide. Uh, hey, now I know how to drive a plane. It's the teacher who make you pass some exams and uh, see how you uh, you are do dealing with the plane and uh, uh, that you are not <coughs> going to be a, a hazard for for yourself uh, your passengers or any other planes you know it's uh, uh, and uh, this uh, this method of, of teaching uh, is uh, very fruitful uh, uh, if, you, if you build a bridge, uh, it's better that you uh, you know how to do it, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's a it's a bridge builder who's going to teach you how to build a bridge. Mm -hmm. No big deal. It's uh, it's how how it works. Uh, but that's predicated on the body of knowledge being external to the one trying to acquire the knowledge and I think that in that sense whether when you can perform in a way that meets the expectations of the instructor then you're assumed to have acquired that body of knowledge that can be a test that can be um, a performance exam and it's as if that body of knowledge in existing separate from and outside of anybody who might want to acquire it is free of any unconscious determination, free of anything of the subject. It's almost like it's, it's, it's the scientific dream of objective knowledge. Okay, can you explain that a bit more? Okay. If if I'm going to learn how to, um, to go back to your example, build a bridge, my intent, the, the knowledge of engineering, of physics, of uh, the laws of construction, all of that, in a way, would be the same regardless of the bridge builder. The bridge builder might have aesthetic concerns, but in that way, if he's going to build a functional bridge, any bridge builder will do fairly much the same job. Their equations should come up with the same, the same amounts, all of that kind of stuff. And in the majority of endeavors of human human knowledge that's the case um, but when you get to something like psychoanalysis there is a whole other realm of experience that comes into play that is unique and particular to the individual making the study 
as well as is being unique and particular to the one trying to help that, inform that individual become competent in that field. And it's not something that necessarily you can come up with a right answer on a test. Uh, you used the term aesthetics for the, the bridge builder. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's... We could think of uh, the ratio between uh, aesthetics and, uh, and know-how. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. okay. I like that. If you, if you take the example of where we were talking about bridge builder, but it's even more uh, obvious for an architect. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is a, a contest to build uh, something. The, uh, uh, there are competitors, and uh, and the, 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 the owner will uh, will decide who is going to build the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the aesthetic uh, uh, d decision is very important there. Of course, all the the, the engineering uh, knowledge and uh, uh, is uh, is capital, but the the aesthetic part is uh, is is not uh, is not minimal. No. Huh? Except if you are building very cheap, uh, cheap building, you know, all the same uh, uh, mm -hmm. everywhere, you know, uh, or uh, or in England, you know, these uh, these streets who are were built by one architect who would the, the owner would own all the streets, all the streets, and everyone was exactly the same. Yeah. Okay. Very easy to get lost. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it makes me think of uh, when Fl Frank Lloyd Wright designed the Mutual of Omaha building. He went with um, fluted columns where they looked like the stem of a champagne glass. And the owner, the, the people who commissioned the job and the local building inspectors firmly believed that his columns would not support the weight of the building. Oh. And he constructed one and loaded it with five times the amount of load that it would have to take. And it took it over five times the amount of load before it finally gave in. So he had both the aesthetic and, and the practical know-how. But here again, you can see where the concerns interact. Another example where aesthetic is important, then we, we are going to psychoanalysis, is uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I heard I li I listened once to a, a guy who is a master in, uh, in Go game. Mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the question was, uh, when you have the choice between uh, two, uh, two solutions uh, uh, which seem to be equivalent, which one do you choose? And he says, I, I, chose, I choose uh, uh, regarding the, t taking the one which is the most aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is to mention that uh, know-how and engineering is not everything. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the, the balance uh, between aesthetics and engineering, call it engineering for architect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is um, is more or less uh, well. It's 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 different balance dif depending on the architect. Mm -hmm. Now, if we come to the analysis. No, before before that, um, uh, if we come back to the architect, um, uh, w when he has passed his exams, he passed his exams on the engineering side. Yes. Uh, maybe uh, if 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 his uh, professors were smart enough, if 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 they were sensitive to uh, to the aesthetic point, maybe he would have a better grade or a lesser grade. But even if the aesthetic was really poor, if engineering was good, he would would become an architect. That's no correct. Problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's come to uh, to analysis and uh, the practice of analysis. Um, I think this uh, ratio between engineering and uh, aesthetics is, uh, 
has to be reconsidered. Mm -hmm. Only aesthetics uh, would make an analyst, mm -hmm. and only engineering will definitely not make an analyst. Yeah. By engineering, I mean what's happening in uh, in many countries, uh, namely most Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, where uh, uh, engineering is the master word uh, uh, in uh, the big uh, institutions that you have uh, in in. Uh, in, in, in the UK, in the United States, in uh, Canada. Um, uh, 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 the, 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 you need to go uh, through a process uh, uh, which is very similar to any kind of engineering. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you get a stamp by, um, by, by your teachers, your professors, uh, your faculty who say, well, this guy is a psychoanalyst. Mm -hmm. I have to emphasize that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this ratio uh, between what I call aesthetics and engineering is, uh, is not the same all over the world. And uh, namely, if you take the Latin countries, namely uh, France, uh, Spain, uh, Belgium, uh, Argentina, Peru, uh, Brazil, Mexico. Uh, the ratio is different. I, I would have really loved to cite uh, Italy, mm -hmm. but unfortunately Italy received, uh, had uh, Berlusconi for 20 or 30 years and now uh, you, uh, psychoanalysis on, on this, what I'm going to describe, is uh, nearly totally disappearing. Mm. Uh, 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 on, and and it, uh, it's just like if Italy was uh, an Anglo-Saxon country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the buzzword in this country is evidence-based practices, which means somebody has gone out and done a research project with a group of subjects, made some findings, and determined that whatever engineering know-how they were using in doing treatment had an effect. And that's the only thing that had an effect. And if you look at what's taught in schools and you look at what the insurance companies are paying for in this country in particular, it's all evidence-based practices which are an approach to knowledge as if there was no human subject present. Mm -hmm. And that's completely antithetical to psychoanalysis where the, the, the human subject is the event you're wanting, is the event you're trying to make happen. Therefore, we are in in a, in in a very difficult situation, which is how to uh, how to teach psychoanalysis, how to teach it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if it is as what I think, this this aesthetic uh, uh, d dimension is uh, very important in that uh, fact, in that domain. And you know there is uh, another domain where aesthetic is, 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 a, is a nearly as important as the, the engineering side, is the, uh, the painting, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. what you, what you, uh, when you see a, 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 a classic uh, a, a painting, uh, you would say that he belongs, the, the painter belongs to a certain school of Painting, mm -hmm. and by school it doesn't mean the uh, the, um, uh, the the fact that he has uh, he has uh, he has a grade in a in a school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a school in the 
in a group, <laughs> maybe just like you call a, a school of fish, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. in a way. Yeah. Uh, in, in a certain sense, then, they all, to define a school would be to say that they all have a certain aesthetic and they, are all, and they all are taking the same approach to the notion of trying to paint. Whether or not they are painting the same subject matter is a whole nother story. Whether or not they use the same, to push it all the way down, you know, how they're holding the brush, how yeah, they're mixing the paints and all that kind of stuff. But you can, you know, it's like when you look at the Dutch masters, you can put seven different paintings by seven different artists up on the wall and you go, oh yeah, those are the Dutch masters around the time of Rembrandt. They're all in the same school. You look at um, the Cubist art at the turn of the, the 20th century, at the beginning of the 20th century. Here again, it's the same approach, but with, and, and that approach carries a certain aesthetic, but you can then look at different artists within a school and identify them as this is a Rembrandt versus this is a Vermeer versus you know something along those lines. You can tell the difference between a Carvalho pointillist painting versus a Seurat. Even though you could say they're both pointillists in the same school. Hmm. And so how does one and, and that's the word Lacan kept coming back to. How do you, how in, in the transmission of a knowledge do you invoke the institution of a style? Mm -hmm. And that's something that cannot be captured on a diploma or a certificate or by a test score not something that will show in a, in a paper and pencil examination. I know in California that was the big uproar a number of years ago because in order to become a licensed psychologist you had the written exam which was the know-how, the engineering part of it and then there used to be an oral exam where you would go into a room with two people you had never met before and they would hand you a one-page description of a case and ask you to, to, to think your way through the case and pretty much they were evaluating your style. How would you deal with the person? Would you think about these things? How, how would you approach them given these different difficulties? And in that sense it was more uh, have you mastered the aesthetics? Do you know how to make a... do you know how to to create a painting that um, functions as a work of art. I don't know how else to put it. And that's gone. It's kind of, you know, you can, you can go to, you can go to a training institute and learn how to be a mechanic. Because a car doesn't care about what you think or your style of being a mechanic. The owner doesn't care. The owner only cares if the car functions. He's interested in the, your engineering knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so I would say that uh, if I take the example of France and uh, uh, Working as a, a psychoanalyst, uh, and you can notice I don't say to be a psychoanalyst, we will come back on this point, which is extremely important later. Mm -hmm. uh, but working as a psychoanalyst is, uh, involves uh, different, uh, different things. Um, uh, if I come back one second to these uh, painters, uh, of course their engineering was uh, huge. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they had to paint nudes for years. 
<laughs> and uh, cubes, cones, and spheres. Sure, sure, <laughs> with, uh, with the shading and, uh, and, and so on, and the, the paraphernalia needed. Yeah, um, uh, but um, there, uh, what is needed to, uh, well, well, let's put the question like this. Um, um, someone comes to see me and uh, after uh, a while say uh, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I decide uh, well, I decide that you are my analyst um, the, the question is uh, what, what is needed when uh, when someone comes and say uh, I want you or you are I decide you are my analyst okay uh, some uh, some ingredients are are needed and all of them are mandatory <coughs> um, They, they are all needed because it's an end function between these uh, these uh, these elements. Mm -hmm. um, the question is then: Are are they sufficient to mm -hmm. accept? Mm -hmm. This is another point that maybe we'll we'll discuss later. Um, you have to go through a psychoanalysis, personal psychoanalysis yourself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a, a process uh, that uh, you choose, you decide, uh, and your analyst decide with you. Mm -hmm. uh, this, of course, cannot be avoided. Um, and... Um, the question being, uh, when when uh, when when do you decide to to to, to quit your analyst? And uh, uh, the question of the end of psychoanalysis is a uh, is a very complex question, and uh, we we don't have to we cannot discuss this here. Uh, but it's not not trivial, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you can find people who say that they've been through psychoanalysis and uh, how they did decide this to, they, they have finished the process is really questionable sometimes mm -hmm. uh, okay the other points are the other uh, uh, elements are the cartel the cartel being uh, um, a structure very, uh, very uh, soft in a way, because it's it's uh, it's four or well, five people who decide. It's four plus one. I will not describe that more here. Four four people plus one decide to uh, to um, to uh, to discuss uh, uh, a, 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 a question that is, seems uh, relevant or or. Or on which they want to uh, to go forward, and uh, they meet on a regular basis. And uh, Lacan suggested, uh, for a reason that I will not discuss here, that uh, it should not last more than two years. Then you need to uh, to to be a member of a, of, a, of an active group of psychoanalysts or psychoanalysis or, say, or people interested in psychoanalysis and um, uh, then you have to of course you have to uh, to, uh, to work on the the, the classical texts mm -hmm. I mean uh, namely uh, uh, first uh, Freud uh, then Lacan and uh, a few others, of course, and uh, uh, in in in, uh, in, uh, in English countries, of course, you have two two problems because Freud used to write in German and Lacan used to write in French, mm -hmm. and uh, 
and the problem is the problem of translation and uh, translation is uh, is always an interpretation mm -hmm. and uh, uh, many interpretations of uh, for instance of Freud in French are really extremely poor and extremely uh, psychologizing in a way mm -hmm. uh, and very far away from uh, from the original German text mm -hmm. And I presume that it's even worse when you try to translate Lacan in, in, from French to English. Yeah. Uh, then you need uh, to all the rest of your uh, uh, interests in life, because the, all these uh, these elements de define uh, your style. Mm -hmm. Your style, as I mentioned, the the style in a school of painting. Mm -hmm. One of the things that if you look at that arc that you just described, you could say that somebody is having difficulties in their relationship with their own unconscious and it causes them to suffer and experience anguish. And they come and they try and speak to somebody else about it and at that point where they might label that person or say, you are my analyst, there's a recognition that that other person there has a resonance with the unconscious that allows some of that suffering and that anguish to lessen. Instead of this the private conversation, it's now a conversation between two entities. The cartel expands that out even further. Now it's, there are issues and questions that this small group of people have where the, all their unconscious, unconsciouses are interacting together and they're speaking among themselves. When you join an association or a larger group, then you're speaking in an even more public form. And at each step there, there should be, or you would anticipate, or at least what I experience myself, is that I become more and more comfortable with that which makes me unique and specifically me and less and less embarrassed or ashamed of it, and I suffer less because of it. Now, this gets to a point where, okay, well, where does one transition from being somebody who is um, doing it for the love of knowledge, a philosopher, as it were, in the classical Greek sense, where does one make that transition into saying, well, now I can take the position that my, the person I labeled analyst, now, when am I able to take that position with another being? And I think Lacan wanted to mark that with the pass, but that, that ran into problems as well. People took it as another diploma. Um, what, what you're describing is... Um is something I think is very important in the process of psychoanalysis. This is the, 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 the a series of transitions from private to public. Uh, in this process, if we put down the question that who is, uh, who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, if we start with the with your friends, and uh, you you decide that although you are very talkative, uh, and uh, you are very prone to uh, to talk of your about your problems to your friends, uh, and you got you are thirty years old, and you realize that even though your your symptoms are there, and they are they are fixed uh, more and more fixed, and more and more there. And uh, okay, so you you decide to uh, to go through a psychoanalysis, and then you have uh, then your your first uh, uh, dialogue, and uh, it takes a time for uh, many analysis to uh, to to face uh, the relative silence of the analyst, and it's due to the fact that it's. Um, uh, relative uh, silence that it is an actual and a true dialogue mm -hmm. um, 
so this is uh, one talking to one, okay, and uh, uh, all along the the process, you uh, uh, you you learn to uh, uh, you learn to talk about you to someone in a decent way. Mm -hmm. Decent by uh, opposition of the term which would be obscene. And uh, uh, symptom as, uh, is obscene by nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, to learn how to, to, to have a decent uh, way to talk about one's symptoms can take years. And uh, uh, sometimes you, you, you hear people who uh, say that they've been uh, through psychoanalysis, although they still are very obscene with uh, when they talk about themsel themselves, is uh, that you question something about the process. Okay. This uh, acquisition, acquisition of decency uh, 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 make it possible to, to speak to, to four other people. And this is the structure of the cartel. Uh, you increase your public, your audience. Mm -hmm. You increase your audience. Your first audience was one, now you've got four in front of you. And uh, this is uh, totally different. I don't mean that you have to start uh, going to uh, uh, working in cartel when you are done with psychoanalysis. It's in parallel, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these uh, these four uh, people you are going to talk to um, are different, and uh, you know that when you talk to one, the three others are going to listen. Okay, that's a different scheme. Mm -hmm. And you know that if you say something to one, the other one of the other that you start to know could interpret what you are saying in a false way, and you 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 are going to even you might say, uh, I, I, you, uh, don't 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 be confused. I don't mean this. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you increase your your audience. <coughs> then. Then you can uh, uh, you can increase again your your audience by writing books or by uh, having some uh, audience in 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 a symposium or uh, whatever or in uh, internet or whatever you but but the the, the point is um, how to uh, to increase your audience. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, l letting obscenity remain a minimum, mm -hmm. and this is my interpretation. This is how I understand the term of pass mm -hmm. that we will not discuss <coughs> the technique here. But could you take a minute and just I, this may be difficult, if not impossible, an example of a decent way of speaking of a, sy a symptom versus an indecent way? Yeah, it's very easy. Uh, uh, um, you can, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in some sessions, you, you, can, you can talk uh, of a spot you have on the nose, and uh, it can be uh, extremely obscene for the analyst to listen that, to that. Mm -hmm. Or it can be, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can talk about, about um, you, you can have a, 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 a discourse which is extremely pondered by, uh, by a, a superego. Mm -hmm. Or by uh, diagnostics. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, by DSM. I know. Uh, you know. I know that I have the the diagnostic number thirty three point five, uh, but with the sense with with the, the characteristic uh, mm -hmm. two hundred and fifty four. You know, mm -hmm. it's obscene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. Uh, you uh, the analyst doesn't want to listen to this mm -hmm. to this obscenity. 
So I've seen you say, hey, you know, my name is, uh, my name is number 22.3 uh, because I've got uh, a panic attack. Uh, like, it's obscene to, to, be, uh, to, to talk of oneself this way. So if I've understood you, the more distant from one's own subjective agency one is, the more obscene one's speech about oneself becomes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's objectivation. It's uh, it's reification. Yes. It's uh, to turn oneself into a thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, a thing that you uh, you bring in front of the analyst, but the analyst doesn't want to see your uh, your. Uh, it's a nearly excrement, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something very obscene, and uh, and and uh, uh, you, you can talk about uh, if we come to this uh, spot on your nose, uh, you, you can introduce this in uh, in in through your history or what, uh, what why you got that since a few days and uh, but you do not want to be a weight for your analyst uh, mm -hmm. you see uh, you uh, in this interaction in this intersubjectivity which is more uh, an appropriate word you um, You don't want to be too heavy on this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, this would be a, a more decent way to... Uh, mm -hmm. Another example, which is much more trivial, but so frequent, so uh, is about uh, masturbation. Uh, Masturbation, by essence, is something that is uh, extremely uh, private, and uh, you got some uh, some some people who are going to describe uh, in details how they they jerk off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to listen to this because they they want to bring you in their in their in their bedroom, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to listen to this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. And uh, to, uh, to, to talk about uh, uh, um, one's own way to, to, to bring oneself pleasure is uh, it's, it's totally private. And uh, it's common that uh, <coughs> analysis, and we, we, we start their analysis believing that they have to go into every detail and after a certain time, they they would never even mention that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my analysts uh, used to say that uh, uh, um, uh, psychoanalysis is a school of decency. Mm -hmm. I don't like so much the word decency in English. There is a much more appropriate word in French. I didn't find any better translation. The French word is pudeur, P-U-D-E-U-R, which is more, uh, more focused on, on, on the intersubjectivity than decency. Mm -hmm. I, I never found uh, any better translation than decent or decency. But pudeur is uh, is really the opposite of obscenity. This is how I would answer you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're trying to to highlight is that there is, how to put this, there is a, a, a path, but there's no way to say that the path has ever been completed. Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of, you can never get rid of your own unconscious. Um, 
<laughs> Fortunately. <laughs> yeah, really. It'd be rather dull otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. So someone, uh, I trained that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <this is> <laughs> I knew some G.I. Joes who mm -hmm. trained that very hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and with, with the pass, there are those that take it as if they've gotten a certificate. But we can't offer anybody a certificate or a diploma. Um, You know, to go back to studying to studying Zen Buddhism, uh, at which point you know it, it's kind of like do you? It's kind of like having some monk come along and say, "You're an enlightened master. You don't need to do that anymore." Exactly. It can't be done. Yes, because what what, what we have to offer, and I mentioned the four or five uh, items which are mand mandatory. Uh, uh, among these, we can offer only uh, a couple of these uh, things. Uh, we can offer some uh, lectures, and um, and uh, so what's what's going to happen at the end of these lectures is really a question because uh, uh, um, uh, to to accept the position of working as psychoanalyst with uh, someone who is asking you uh, to it's, uh, the other the other parts are 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 a necessity mm -hmm. and uh, definitely we cannot offer this. Mm -hmm. um, we are in a domain where a diploma is uh, is is uh, in a way irrelevant. It's relevant in the uh, in the term of university, but it's not relevant in uh, in our domain. Uh, we are uh, we are dealing with something very very new for people who are going to listen to this. It's a, it's a domain of uh, a discourse which is uh, extremely different from the discourse of the the university. And uh, in w one session we will discuss this in details and. Uh, because it can be written on, mm -hmm. on, on, a, on a board, you know, extremely precisely mm -hmm. what are the, 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 the differences between uh, these uh, two discourse, the discourse of the analyst and the discourse of the university, mm -hmm. and some two other discourses or three other discourses. Uh, So, not to say that we have nothing to offer. Um, uh, I believe that what we have to offer is, uh, is, uh, is uh, an int introduction to, uh, to, to, to questioning. Mm -hmm. We hope that at the, at the end of, uh, of these uh, sessions, uh, the the uh, the uh, the person who the persons who are going to listen to this uh, will uh, will will leave with questions and not answers. Mm -hmm. I know that if this is very hard to accept in this country. Very hard. Very hard. Uh, I don't mean by this that it's not possible to uh, to be a, a a PhD in psychoanalysis. Why not? You you can have a, a PhD in agriculture and uh, never have seen a plow in your in your life, or mm -hmm. never used a spade. Never had to deal with a tractor or pull weeds. No, you don't know this, and uh, but you can have a PhD because you can even you might you might. Uh, be a, uh, a a doctor in and in this domain and know what's the evolution of agriculture in the last uh, millennium, and uh, this is a, can be very interesting to read your thesis about how the agriculture has evolved in uh, in Europe uh, mm -hmm. since uh, the end of the first uh, millennium, for instance. This doesn't make you. Uh, um, I wouldn't want to count on you to grow crops to live on. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have an expression in French which says, um, "It's at the uh, 
it's at the bottom of the of the wall that you you see uh, the the mason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's not in the in in the university. You can be a PhD in masonry. Why not? <laughs> yeah, but have you ever laid a brick? But you might be uh, extremely bad in uh, building a, a wall. <laughs> yeah, there's there in English we don't have different terms. But in French, I think I've got that right. Connaissance. Connaiss no, the, the I it is not. goes here, after the A. And in English, they're both, they're both said as knowledge. Oh, but there, can't you say know-how? Yeah. Savoir faire, a, know a, how. A knowing how to make do with. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is more what we're talking about. If you just get a degree, you can have information, but not know what to do with it. And what we're looking at is having a knowledge that you know what to do with in the moment. Because in the interaction between the two individuals, in the, in the psychoanalytic session, the analyst is always called to make an intervention, either through silence or through speech, mm -hmm. but it's the knowing how, when, where, and why to make do in the moment with what's in front of you to have an effect. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, I don't know if this, th this analogy may not hold, but it's almost um, the thing that came to mind was being a batter at the plate. And the pitcher is throwing the ball, and you have to know where to swing, how to swing, whether or not you're going to swing, if you're going to bunt or not, whether, you know, and all those different things. But in that instant that he releases the ball, that's the amount of time you have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you are in dialogue with an inter, with an individual, hearing both the 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 what the the message the ego wants you to get, and the message the unconscious is trying to communicate, how do you then play with those different levels in the moment to have an effect? Mm -hmm. And that's not something that comes out of a book. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Most of the most of the approaches to acquiring knowledge assume that the body of knowledge is fixed and that it doesn't evolve, it doesn't change. But this is a situation where you are embodying the knowledge in the moment and it's not fixed. Hmm. This reminds me of uh, <coughs> Something that uh, I, I think I've already said that, but I love that this uh, this sentence. This uh, it's uh, um, uh, something I heard from Jean Cocteau. Uh, uh, someone was asking him, uh, "Can you please uh, talk about what your painting uh, and?" Uh, explain your your art and he said uh, well it's uh, it's impossible because it's just like if you were asking a flower to talk about horticulture or agriculture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is uh, impossible yeah and uh, this you know if we talk about Jean Cocteau again it's a matter of style as you can see uh, 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 something that's uh, in the just beneath what we are staying uh, today is always referring to style. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that's that's the other. If you think about it in terms of style, each subject is unique and particular and specific, and psychoanalysis attempts to clear away the things that 
hinder, hamper, encumber, uh, cause the subject to stumble over that which is unique and specific to them that doesn't fit into what is preordained or as you said earlier this when speaking about decent versus obscene what is what is the super egoic demand and in that sense all these other approaches to knowledge are looking at rather than the specific trying to find the general what's true of what could be said that we might take to be true of all human beings, which is the university, versus what is particularly and specifically true about this human being? Hmm. Yeah, we are dealing with singularities. Mm -hmm. What is singular? And uh, the DSM or, 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 or Jung even mm -hmm. young, young, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he was, uh, he was extremely reluctant to uh, to deal with singularities, mm -hmm. and this is one of the major uh, the, the, uh, diversions that mm -hmm. he had with uh, Freud. Uh, he he was more interested in what is common mm -hmm. between human beings, and uh, and Freud and uh, his followers. Uh, Lacan uh, much more interested in uh, in, in singularities. Um, I'd like to come back to what we have to offer. Uh, what we have to offer is uh, is it's on the basis of uh, two years and. Uh, Two years regarding to uh, may maybe I would say in two years maybe eight sessions ten sessions I don't know exactly. Uh, it's not much. If you take for instance uh, Jacques Lacan, uh, uh, his uh, seminar lasted from 1953 to 1980. For the the, the ten uh, yeah ten last. 15 last years it was um, twice uh, twice a month uh, two hours but before it was two hours every week uh, and that led to uh, a huge amount of uh, knowledge that he would he would have that he had offered to the to the audience. Mm -hmm. So what do we, uh, what can we offer and how can we uh, say it's gonna, you're gonna get a diploma after two years uh, of, uh, of these, uh, these lectures or workshops. Uh, and this comes again to uh, what is, what the rest is and the rest of the work is uh, is uh, is uh, is very important and very uh, 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 important in in quantity as well, mm -hmm. quality and quantity, to uh, to uh, to dare to accept. You pretend I am your analyst. Uh, you you pretend I can be your analyst. Okay. During the sessions, I, I accept this position. This is uh, this is something very far away from the university. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's really terrible in this country is that you they uh, they, they try to uh, to make the two uh, together. Mm -hmm. This is nonsense. Total nonsense. So we're going to offer to try an experiment. We're going to meet. We're going to have dialogues about the topics that we consider relevant and fundamental to understanding psychoanalysis from a Lacanian perspective. The hope is that we will have sparked 
enough of a hunger that people will want more and people will enjoy the, the adventure to pick it up for themselves and see where it carries them. Okay, well, what is, uh, what, what, what can be said, what else can be said? Well, I've been, one of the things that comes out of, and I'm going to jump ahead a whole bunch, the discourse of the capitalist is that whatever gets produced in that discourse is either not enough or it's too much. And so I would say either for those of you willing to join us, you will either be overwhelmed or completely dissatisfied. <laughs> And that means we're doing our job. Yes, because uh As in the discourse of the the capitalists, um, and every discourse, there is a question of of the product, what is produced, mm -hmm. and uh, we we cannot get into the many details here because this will be a. Uh, Uh, further lecture, but if you focus on the, the product in each discourse, you realize that uh, there are four or five, if you include the discourse of the capitalist, there is four or five uh, 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 products out of the process of these uh, discourses. If there is one thing to emphasize or one thing to describe here very briefly is the, the what's going to be the product of the of the discourse of the analyst. It's uh, it's not much and it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's not much because it's impossible to quantify. In the discourse of the, 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 the university, product is a new doctor. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, stamped, you know. Uh, and, Came right uh, off the assembly line like any other Ford or Chevy. Yeah, mm -hmm. in, the, in the discourse of the capitalist, it's, uh, it's, uh, some, it's uh, something. And in every, any, every discourse, there is something that is a product there. It's uh, something that is um, um, that has no weight, but which is a, a major uh, accomplishment. And when I say accomplishment, the word is not uh, appropriate because this accomplishment is not something that comes at the very end of psychoanalysis. Uh, psychoanalysis. This accomplishment comes from what I was able to say last week. Mm -hmm. It's an accomplishment following nearly a a every session. It is a, 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 a very uh, uh, unpondable, unbearable, or uh, impossible to wait uh, accomplishment to say uh, I still have my, my problems, I still have my difficulties in life, but last week I was not able to say, to use the same words. Mm -hmm. I, I used slightly different words to, uh, to describe that. And this is uh, worth, mm -hmm. worth the, <coughs> the work I'm doing by talking to my analyst. 
This is what Lacan called le plus de jouir. It's difficult to translate that in French. Probably you've got an idea. Uh, the, uh, the discourse of the, of the cap capitalist could be the, the value added, mm -hmm. added value. Mm -hmm. uh, there it's going to be the, uh, uh, the added jouissance. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> um, I use more refined words to talk about my uh, my my uh, my difficulties, and uh, this is uh, uh, an added uh, something that is that has been added l since last week, and this is at the heart of the discourse of the yeah. analyst. Mm -hmm. Most people would say then that, would, would assume that the course of analysis ends with a big bang and everything's all of a sudden better and different and wonderful. Whereas what we're talking about here uh, makes me think, and I'm probably not going to get the quote right, it's a, it's a phrase of Aeschylus that knowledge comes into the depth of my heart drop by drop like a burning coal on my skin and little by little I am made different. This um, little by little difference differences is um, Is uh, it's like uh, it's like a click, I would say. If you uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a different perspective. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, if uh, something you see from a, a point of view, and then you have this little shift, and you mm -hmm. see it a different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is. Uh, 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 tiny but uh, but very important jouissance mm -hmm. increase in jouissance mm -hmm. jouissance added mm -hmm. and this comes back to the, 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 the what, what we said to begin with where what is the truth huh? mm -hmm. um, what is the truth of my symptom um, it's an evolving truth mm -hmm. because if I say my if I if I if I if I use a, a slightly different word next uh, next week or last than last week, then it's um, an evolving uh, fiction, mm -hmm. evolving truth. And there, again, there is a big naivete of to, to believe that uh, uh, truth and fiction are not uh, compatible. Because in standard language, what is true is not fiction. Yeah. But when you go through this process, you realize that uh, truth has, has the structure of a fiction. Mm -hmm. How to come to affliction to fiction. <laughs> <laughs> How to get the L out? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> as long as it's not the L of Lacan, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> that out. <laughs> okay. So, my assumption is that People may have questions, people may have thoughts. Um, I'm assuming you can go to the Seagas website and find how to get a hold of us. Uh, you can find Jacques at lutetium.org in Paris. Um, 
we'll see who cares to join us mm -hmm. and we go forward. Yeah, okay. Okay, I think we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay? Okay. Till the next time. <laughs>